All right, I hope you're ready for a lot of fives today because I got an Atomus Ninja 5 on top of a Canon R5 shooting some 5K raw. That's right. Let's take a look at what the newest firmware update from Atomus means to you and how it can unlock your R5 even further. one of us that has a Canon R5 are always looking ways to further unlock the full potential of what this camera can do. And a critical component of that is, of course, the external recorder that you have to put on the camera. That's one of those things that really just unlocks everything the camera can do. Now, most of us out there have Ninja 5s. It's a very, very popular accessory for the R5. But recently, Atomus came out with a Ninja 5 Plus. And the great thing about the 5 Plus is it allows you to record up to 8 K raw, which is something that Ninja 5 could not do. And I think a lot of us that are R5 owners have been kind of up in the air about, should we go ahead and replace our Ninja 5 with a 5 Plus? Now the drawback to that is this, the Ninja 5 Plus is $900 more expensive than the original Atomus Ninja 5. And I think the question is, is it worth it? I actually did another video where I talk about that. I'll put a link up here just in case you're interested in looking at it. Go ahead and take that out. I might ask some questions about the V Plus you may specifically had. But the more important thing is this. Atomus recently came out with a firmware update, 10.68, that actually allows the Atomus 5 to get raw from your Canon R5. Now it's not 8K raw, it's 5K raw, but it still gives us a raw option if you already have this existing piece of hardware. And the great news is it won't cost you a single cent more if you already got it. And it's something that I just really wanted to update you guys about and let you know what the deal is with this and if it's worth installing on your Atomus 5 if you are a Canon R5 owner. Now, the firmware update, as I said, is, is firmware update 10.68. And the critical thing to this is you have to have updated the firmware on your Canon R5 to update 1.40. If you do not do this, then none of this works. And the real big thing about Canon update 1.40 is it allowed raw output through your HDMI, even this regular 2.0 HDMI cable, up here to your recorder. Now, the Atomus 5 can't record the full 8K signal, but there is a way to export 5K RAW. I'll show you that in a second. Just wanted you to make sure that you have that firmware update on your camera, just to make sure you can get all of this on there. Now, just as a side note on Atomus firmware update 10.68, Atomus does say if you're not planning on running RAW ever up here, don't install. They, they basically say there's no need to do that. They've also released a firmware update after 10.68, 10.71 for Atomus X compatibility. And they say not to update that to that to 10.71 if you want raw. So if you want to get this raw recording, make sure you're installing firmware update 10.68 from Atomus. It's a better taste right now. I've been using it. It works great. Just wanted to let you know what is going on. One other thing I would do is I would recommend logging into the Atomus website and activating any codecs that may be lurking on here. It's just a good way to make sure you're getting as much as you can from your device. Okay, now, th now that we know how to do that, let's go ahead and show you how to get access to this 5K RAW and the steps you need to do. Because there's a couple of steps and it's important for you to know. The first thing is this. If you come here and if I click on my menu here, I'll come to the last menu in my camera settings and you'll see that HDMI RAW put I can't access it. And if I click on Y, you will see it tells me that it's not available because the image stabilization mode is on. So it's very, very important. If you wanna do RAW, this goes for 8K period, you need to make sure image stabilization is cut off on your camera to access that setting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to seven in the menu, go on IS, and I'm gonna take digital stabilization and cut it off. Now when I come back, look at that. Now I have an access to get HDMI raw output. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it on. And here's another important thing. Standby low res, cut it on. It is an incredible feature. I'm gonna do a whole video coming up on what this is. But basically, long story short, it essentially means that your back screen can stay on and it'll just show a low res version and it won't affect the raw signal coming out, which means not only can you get the unlimited record hack that I've told you about, but now you can keep the back screen on while you do it. I'm gonna do a video coming up on this because it's so amazing, but what I recommend, make sure standby low res is set to on, okay? Now, once you do that, 
you're going to come back here to the menu and we're going to go to movie record quality. And as you can see, I have all the 8K settings, but if I put that there to 8K raw, on my Atomus, obviously, I have no input. So what you have to do is you have to make sure the video is cropped to get the 5K raw. This is 5K crop video. So what I'm gonna do, I have 8K raw, I'm gonna go to moving cropping, hit it on enable, and now if you look up here on my Atomus, I have 5K ProRes RAW. And the good thing about this is you can do up to 30 frames a second on the Canon R5 to the Atomus. I know there've been a lot of rumors out there that we'd be able to do 5K up to 60 frames a second. That is not true. It maxes out at 30 frames a second. But 5K up to 30 frames a second RAW on there, which is really, really great. Now, another good thing about this firmware update about ProRes RAW, when you bring this into Premiere, you'll be able to, be able to adjust your cinema gamut, your color gamuts, and your exposures, stuff like that, but you will not be able to manipulate white balance and ISO in Premiere as it stands today in the fall of 2021. However, if you're in Final Cut Pro, you can access white balance and ISO sliders in Final Cut, but not Premiere. I really hope there's a firmware update that allows us to access those things in Premiere to get the full benefit of the raw recording. But even right now, I will take the added dynamic range and stuff you get from the 5K files. Now, one thing you need to know about this is if you're shooting in the 5K, you are going to have a crop factor. And I'll just put up an example right here so you can see the difference between an 8K image full frame and basically the field of view as it shrinks down from 5K. And as you can see, you do lose a fair bit of field of view as is to be expected. But if you're in a situation where you have wide lenses and you can basically make up that difference, you may really consider having that raw ability, especially for certain scenes, may outweigh, outweigh the risk of losing the crop images. One other side note, yes, you absolutely now can get unlimited 5K raw recording from the Atomus Ninja V. I did some quick tests on that. Um, same way I've done these a hundred times on this channel, I'm not gonna show you one more test. But yes, basically record out to the signal and your Canon will record as long as you can have hard drive space to record on 5K RAW. And you can record in two different RAW formats on that Atomus Ninja 5. You can do ProRes RAW and ProRes RAW HQ, which is a little bit higher quality than ProRes RAW. It just depends how you wanna think about space. So you get a pretty decent amount for RAW, have the flexibility of RAW, and the great thing is you don't have the record limits that you have stuck here in the Canon R5. So there you go, I think this is a really cool thing. And really what I would conclude is, this is a fantastic update if you already have a Canon Ninja 5 and you're on the fence about whether you should spend that huge amount of money on the Ninja 5 Plus. I do think if you have the money, the Ninja 5 Plus is a great monitor. It will be a wonderful future-proof investment for you. You'll probably use the Ninja 5 Plus for the next several years, just like I've been using this Ninja 5 for several years. But if you currently own a Ninja 5, and you don't wanna spend that money, I think this really extends the life of your Ninja 5, and it's just nice to have the raw option available especially without all the record limits that come internally, the overheating issues are coming internally, and it's just really, really cool. And just wanted to make a quick video, letting y'all, making sure you're aware that this is out there because now it is there for the Ninja 5. And I gotta give kudos to, to both Canon and Atomos for allowing to work in tandem and give us just a great, great system. Anyway, guys, that's all I have to say. If you have any questions, please leave me any notes below. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, guys, gotta keep on shooting. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.